Action. action. Wait, you say action. I don't say action. Go. Hey, folks. <coughs> All right. Sorry. All right. How do you say start with Canadian? Start. <laughs> Goal. Goal? Oh, let's go, eh? Let's go, eh? Going? Oh, you're gone. Right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm Chris Bridgeford. That's Brian Kane. That's Amber Dom. That's Ransom Lee. Welcome. And that's Fiona running through the camera. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we, what are we talking about today? Bench execution. Oh, yeah. All right, so we've covered, we've covered unrack. We've covered pre-training drills. Today, we're actually going to take you through the execution of the lift and what you should be looking for with different bench pressing styles with the actual movement of the bench press itself. So, let's do it. Yeah. So today, Brian's gonna show you how he specifically naps. Yep. He's got two nappers. One that's flexible and one that's not. I'm Brian's not. not. Wide grip nappers and close grip nappers. So everything's gonna be pretty similar when we're talking about execution for the bench press with wide grip benchers and close grip benchers. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a few small differences with the actual bar path itself, but how we actually stabilize our shoulders and our hips and everything at the start of the lift is gonna be pretty similar. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Anybody else have anything they wanna add in there? So the similarities that you'll see between someone like myself and someone like Brian, we're gonna talk about scapular attraction and depression. Um, doesn't matter if you're a large human or a smaller human, that's something you really need to dial in. Okay. So Brian's gonna lay down on the bench here. Uh, I'm a top first guy. Yep, so we've covered setup in previous videos. Just when we get tight. All right, so after Brian, as Brian unracks the bar here, he's gonna take a big breath in and he's gonna try to fill, he's gonna fill that, he's gonna fill that rib cage with as much air as he can, and he's gonna stabilize that T-spine in those shoulders as much as he can. We're gonna unrack the bar here. And here at the start of the lift, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna focus on creating torque through the shoulders and intention of external rotation. So a lot of people talk about bending the bar down and how that's a bad cue. That is a very bad cue if the intention of bending the bar down is to over tuck the elbows on the eccentric to try to get more stabilization from the lats, which is an old multiply cue and it does not apply well to raw lifting. But if the intention there is to create external rotation at the shoulder, then it is a very good cue. So Brian's gonna unrack the bar here fill his shoulders with air, he's gonna breathe into his chest, he's gonna get ready to press the bar, he's gonna start bending that bar down. Another way that we can think about this is squeezing down with the pinkies, and then once he has that extra rotation set here, we're gonna be able to actually begin to lower the bar to the chest. What's really important is seeing where his elbows are in regards to where the bar is. We right, so elbows, elbows are nice and stacked right under the wrist. Yep, so again, at the start of the lift, we have that intention of external rotation of the shoulder. Another oh, thing you'll notice with Brian is that when he's benching, uh, after he's unracked, he's trying to drive his shoulders down towards his hip. Yeah. So like that, that's another very important, important thing. Instead of just trying to you know, spread the bar and you know, retract the scalp, you've got to also depress. So it's that thinking that there's like a string attached to your shoulder down your hip and it's pulling straight down. So it's here like this. I like to use this like, so Sebastian, the Australian strength coach, uses that cue, uh, uh, pull your shoulder blades to your back pockets. It's the same, so it's the same idea with like, with a deadlift or a spot really. You're, you're always setting down. Yes. Just pulling everything down towards that back pocket to create all that tension. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. So another thing that we uh, another thing that we can cover here is uh, that we need to cover here is uh, is leg drive uh, during this uh, during this uh, variant of, of bench pressing is it's going to be a lot more active. Uh, when we have somebody like Am Amber who's going to demonstrate her bench press here in a minute, uh, she's going to have a lot more passive leg drive in her setup because she's very very tight just due to her setup. Brian here is not very mobile, so he's going to have to create a lot of that tension and a lot of that stability on his own. So when he's getting ready to press here and he has his feet set and we're going to begin lowering before he begins to lower the bar to his chest, the intention of his leg drive is going to be able to is going to be to drive himself off the back of the bench. He's going to be pushing back. 
It's going to be horizontal leg drive, whereas when we have amber benching, she's going to have a very vertical leg drive. So Brian here, he's, he's unwrapped the bar, right? He's focusing on creating external rotation of the shoulder. He starts to lower the bar to his chest. He's focusing on driving that shoulder down to his butt to get good scapula pressure to get his last to stabilize the bar. And he is actively pushing back to try to drive himself off the back of the bench. This is going to help get, this is going to help produce force off his chest and it's going to drive that bar back to where it started. Tight. <laughs> relaxing their lower body as the bar gets to their chest. Mm -hmm. We need to maintain tension through our legs and our glutes the entire time. You'll see like, you'll see that uh, see something settle, and then you'll see the, like that push the legs. You don't want to be tight all the time, and if you're able to get that drive, then you're not, you're not safe. Right, so uh, something that we, we really want to focus on here is keeping that touch point as high as possible during the duration of the chest. Uh, during the during the duration of the of the press, uh, I like to I like to use the cue pull your chest to the bar, and something that we'll see with closer grip benchers is a little bit of a heave technique, which is okay as long as we're not sacrificing that high that high point of our arch. So I'll Brian get down here and I'll demonstrate what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Lower the bar to your chest and then just kind of like relax. So he's going to come down and he's going to let that bar sink into his chest and you're going to see his rib cage collapse into the bar. So we don't want that and he's, he's trying to utilize a heat technique here but he's sacrificing that position of his arch and he's just letting himself flatten out under the bar. So he can do that, he can use this heat technique but he needs to keep that chest high, he needs to keep that rib cage high and stable and he can, dr he, can dro he can drop the bar into his chest a little bit to utilize that heat technique but it's really important that we don't sacrifice that high touch point for our arch. He comes down, he lets the bar sink into his chest, he keeps the chest high though, and then he's able to use that leg drive to bring the bar back up. Any other points? Head down. Yeah, head down. Drive your head to the bench. Yes. And this, uh, pulling the chest of the bar, you can, you can, chest the bar, you can, you can kind of catch yourself watching it because you're thinking like, well, I want to pull it. So you're going to watch it as you pull. Well, you're going to pull your head up like that. And what we're talking about, you just, you see it a lot. And there's, I mean, I guess this is kind of up for debate a little bit, but this, this is what we're talking about. That head up. Your head yep. and the chest the collapses, the arch collapses. As long as you are able to maintain this chest. If you lose yeah. your chest as your head comes off the bench, then you're going to go into internal rotation, you'll lose lot of stability in your upper body and we're going to put a lot, a lot of stress on the shoulders and we're going to let up yeah you'll put a lot of strain on the pecs and delts so if you are able to hold position with bringing your head off the bench then it's fine it's no issue if it works for you if it's comfortable then go ahead and use it but if okay. it's very obvious that you're sacrificing position for what's comfortable then it's time to go back to the drawing board and change some things i would say a large majority of people are not able to hold that tension yeah, yeah, no, with yeah. their head up and that's where you see you know, people getting real bad pec tweaks or bad pec tears coming. Um, it's just from sitting there and just thinking that it's okay to do just because you see other people who are stronger being able to do it doesn't mean you can do it yourself. If it's not something that you can do and be technically efficient at, you can come into a situation where you may be heaving the bench, which is actually legal in competition. So uh, quick wrap up. We'll just go through everything real quick. I was kind of pretty all over the place. We'll just hit the, hit the key points. And then we'll go into amber style of benching, which is wide grip high arch. So Brian's back down, unrack the bar, unrack the bar. The goal here is to retract the shoulders, depress, depress the shoulders as much as possible, bending the bar, getting that active, active intention, external rotation. He's actively driving back into the bench to keep that arch high. He's going to let the bar sink into his chest a little bit. He's going to keep that arch high. So, and then he's going to drive back, and he's going to have more of a he's going to have more of a drift back bar path. He's not going to have a vertical bar path. He's going to drive that bar back over his face. I'd say a good, an easy way to explain this with somebody that has uh, more of a narrow grip uh, bench is you want to finish where you start. So if the bar starts here. We don't if the bar starts more over your face, you don't want to end the press with the bar out over your chest because we've seen that with your presses a lot in the past where you yep. get caught up. You get caught pressing vertical and you stall out, stall out. So we want to make sure that we have that drift back bar path over the face. 
Uh, that way we can finish where we started. So, all right, wide grip benching now. Get in there, Amber. All right, execution for the wide grip bench press. Uh, for the most part, a lot of the a lot of the principles we're talking about here are gonna be the same. Uh, bench press is a bench press. Uh, there's gonna be a couple small differences here uh, with bar pass specifically and intention of leg drive uh, during the press. So uh, Amber's gonna set up here. Everything is gonna be pretty freaking similar to what we just talked about. So she's gonna focus on driving all that weight back into her upper back. She's gonna take her wide grip. She's gonna set her feet underneath her. She's gonna get that nice high arch. And the biggest difference here for Amber and Brian uh, in the start of their press is at the beginning of her lift, her leg drive is gonna be a lot more passive because she has stability here simply from forcing herself into this position. This is not, as, as mobile as Amber is, this is not a comfortable position for her to be in. I guess, I guess this, is, uh, this is something that we could uh, point out uh, uh, with you know bench press as opposed to squatting and deadlifting. Squatting and de deadlifting are not very comfortable lifts. They're, they're pretty painful movements to do. And if you find yourself comfortable or relaxed, on the bench itself and you're probably not doing something right you should be you should be really really uncomfortable from this from the tightness that you're creating so <clears throat> so she has a lot of stability here simply from being in this position her leg drive is very very passive at the start because her leg drive is going to be more of a reactive force in the bottom of the bench press to stabilize that bar on her chest and to, to propel it back up so as she starts to lower the bar to her chest Things are still very similar here. She's trying to drive that scapular depression, intention of external rotation at the wrist. We still want to make sure that we're keeping that elbow stacked directly under the wrist as much as we can. The goal here is to find that highest touch point on her chest in relation to keeping a good, a, a good, good stackedness of the of the elbow to the wrist. So if that means that she has to touch a little bit higher or lower to maintain that stacking, then that's then that's something that she can find on her own. But we want to touch it. We want to find the shortest range of motion possible here while keeping this elbow stacked under the wrist. And as she lowers the bar to her chest, she's going to focus on driving this heel to the floor more and more and more. So the demand for stability from her leg drive, from her hips, has got to be greater as she lowers that bar closer to her chest. So at the top, it's not a big deal. But as that bar gets closer to her chest, she's gonna drive into the floor more and more and more to increase that stability so that way she can push the bar off her chest. And as you can see here, sorry, do one more. When Amber, when Amber lowers the bar to her chest and she presses back up, due to having a more vertical leg drive and just the position of her shoulders, she's gonna have a straighter bar path as opposed to Brian. So uh, that's a key difference to point out. If you are a wide grip bencher and you find yourself using the drift back technique and you see a lot of issues when you get to 90% or more or just heavy weights, it might be something to try differently. Uh, it might be something that you want to try differently there as you know, have, you know, maybe focusing on having a straighter bar path instead of trying to push that bar back over your face. I want to touch on this real quick. When he says try something, give it like months or weeks. Yeah. Don't try something once and say, oh, it doesn't feel right, it feels a couple of, yeah, no, no shit, man. Like, you just tried it for the first time. Things take time, everything, everything takes time to feel comfortable. So. I can tell you that never feels comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, your, your, your tightness should never feel comfortable. No, no, no. no. If, if, if you express, if, you're, if your back's not on the verge of cramping, yeah, you're yeah. not tight enough. So, I think we covered everything for both of those. Mm -hmm. uh, wide grip and close grip bench execution. I said they're both bench presses. Things are going to be pretty similar. Uh, there's going to be a, small, a few small differences there. Uh, yeah, there you go. Out. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Make face. No. Okay. Okay. Well. No, you got the camera. All right. <clears throat> All right. So today we covered bench press execution. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found uh, a lot of things that we uh, talked about useful. Stay tuned for next week where we talk about deadlifting. Oh yeah. See him light up. Yeah. Now we can talk about fun stuff. So we got the stupid bench press stuff out of the way. Okay. So. But, but, but all jokes aside in bench press, nobody really likes to do it. Well, some people do, no. but it really does in all seriousness, that'll make or break your total. Bench press is what, when you see the, the difference between the top 10 and the top, I don't know, 
a 30, a 30. Yeah. it's bench press that's making the difference. So put the effort in, put the time in to get it right. Agreed. Thanks, you agree, Steve. Yeah. <sighs> yep. All right. As, yeah. always, <laughs> as always, uh, keep an eye out on the Generation Strength IG page where we post uh, shorter clips for you guys to talk, uh, watch and uh, learn about these topics. And uh, if you like the videos that we post on the YouTube channel, uh, subscribe, uh, leave comments and suggestions for future videos, and keep an eye out for more. <laughs>